Oh, yes, I did. Oh. I, I, I just can't remember anymore. <laughs> He was on tour at the time. Our good deed of the week surely goes to Cheslin Colby after his uh, match for Tullys against Munster. The Springbok star stayed on after the match to pick up rubbish. Everyone else had legged it to the sheds for a dish hour. The whistle had gone in Ireland, but Colby proved to be a recycling machine. Wow, imagine Millsy, though. He would have done a bit of that at lunchtime, eh? No bull rush? For you, it would have been detention. That's part of my rubbish. detention. <laughs> yeah, it was, actually. <laughs> yeah, what was he picking up, though? That's what I don't care. On Plastic the field. bottles, and the fans weren't happy. Oh, they, they were throwing saying, them Well, them. I think it was just the leftovers. Oh. Plastic bottles, you know, recycle that stuff. And uh, how's this for giving back? Richie Mwonga, he's got a part share in a horse of his own namesake, Mwonga, and any winnings that he gets a, a cut of, he donates back to the Child Cancer Foundation. So that is absolutely brilliant. But awesome. you know what needs a bit of attention? Uh, the chat on Silver Lake. We need to sort out what what's recyclable and what's irretrievable. So I think that needs some attention. Maybe Colby needs to come and help us out with that one. Well, if he's got anything to offer, I'd like to hear it because everyone's got something to say at the moment, Berman. Good luck. I look at it now and, and look, last week, who got together? Well, New Zealand Rugby, the provincial unions, the Super Rugby franchises were involved, and, of course, the NZRPA were in that discussion, represented by Rob Nicol and JK. Um, they've come together, and it doesn't appear at this stage that we are any closer to getting a decision or any sort of agreement on the decision New Zealand rugby is going to make in the future, particularly this one right now. Well, look, the, the fundamental problem that I, I can see, and I've, I've spoken to some business people, spoken to a whole lot of different people about it, I just think that it's a relationship that's broken. Which How one that being? Which one? This, the, uh, the, this is Rob Nicol and the, and the NZR. It's broken. How can you start with mediation? You tell me that's a relationship? I ask them, how's your relationship? Oh, yeah, it's good. Oh, now we're going to mediation? I mean, look, maybe, maybe we just need a change. I know NZR's had a change. Maybe the RPA need to look at having a, a bit of a change because I just don't think that relationship's working. We are talking a pivotal moment in the game and yet we're not sitting around the table and actually people are talking about values. Our values in, in the All Blacks, and you guys know this, have always been, we'll sort it out, you know. We will agree to disagree and commit. And I just can't see that at the moment. So I think that's the, the fundamental issue. If you get to the deal, I think everyone's starting to make their own decisions. I rang um, Murray Bolton, one of our most successful business people, because I wanted to know, I'm not a businessman. I said, what, what would you do? And I'll, I'll, I'll read you the quote. The deal values the All Blacks at 4.5 billion. Silver Lake has had years of experience at managing large investments and enhancing their value in many areas, including pro sports. Their interests are totally aligned with all parties. How much experience does the NZR view have? I'm supposed to say NZR. You? Um, how much experience do the NZR have in managing and growing the value of such an asset? They realise they need help, and this deal gives them that. You know, so this, is, this someone... is valuing the commercial and side of our game. That, and I, look, there are concerns, Mills, and, and obviously the, the Players Association have voiced their concerns, but the fact that we're not getting any closer, that it doesn't appear as though they're able to come together. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to talk about a number of areas going forward, but you've got the community game, you've got the value overseas, but reality is we need investment now. Is, is that the position everyone is in? And the longer this goes on, and also there's a collective bargaining agreement that they're having to go through right now. There are a number of situations. This is, a, this is fluid, but it's got to happen sooner rather than later, right? Well, you think so. And, and <laughs> all we really know, and when you, when you pull out a figure like that, you know, four, 400 million or so, and we've been crying out for money, particularly in our you know, grassroots game, you know, what's actually going on? I, I, I kind of agree with your point in terms of some of those those factors or issues can actually be solved by you know talking about it you know and there is there is little that's coming out of the NZR as well in terms of what they're going to and how they're going to use that money which perhaps is what uh, the players association is saying we want more detail in terms of that but do they need to go to mediation for that well why not just nut it out here yeah, here's where it's going this is where this is going when you talk about the collective bargaining and the collective uh, agreement of players collective coming up that's got an influence as well because you know the NZRPA are now sitting there and going well you know in terms of the player pool and the revenue I mean, what does that look like and, and perhaps they haven't got that figure or they haven't got to us or they're not comfortable they with that right in terms of their security oh, look, I, I personally believe that the you know the, the players deal is antiquated it needs to change you know like from a commercial point of view if I was a player right now and I'm looking at this deal and I'm going you know if this works out these guys can take me as an individual to America, you know, and grow the commercial thing, I'm going to make more money as a player. 
and grow the game and grow the sport, which has that flow-on effect. And I want to just show, this is essentially the three positions we're sitting at right now. And let's put them up on the big screen, because to me, this is critical about what New Zealand rugby is, is dealing with right now in regards to the three positions. And what are they? If you think about it, it's, they get together, they agree on it, and all of a sudden Silver Lake is part of New Zealand rugby. That's the first one. If they don't agree, New Zealand rugby with uh, and the RNZPA, the status, status quo might um, stay as it is. And then, this is the key one down the block, the players, they block the deal, and then this may force New Zealand rugby to look at their collective bargaining agreement and, and we've seen it in other sports. Now, this is extreme. You start talking about locking out players, players going on strike. Now, that is something we do not want to get to when you're talking about at the highest level, if it's necessary, but remember that. We agree to the deal, That's the, that is it. What is, everyone comes together, or it's blocked, and everyone walks away, and does everyone maybe miss out? Of course, the NZRPA, they're looking at other options going forward, and there's the last one. Possibly, if it gets to a point where there is nothing, nowhere to go, and New Zealand Rugby wants to carry on, they look at renegotiating, renegotiating that collective bargaining agreement. This is critical. This is a conversation that's going to continue, and we're going to talk to Steve Lancaster a bit about possibly how things might change in regards to the community space, how much we want to grow the game. Uh, Byrne, so much for us to talk about, but you've been testing us. Plenty of questions here, but there's been questions every week on The Breakdown from you and testing us for our trivia. Indeed, and I think we need to lighten the mood because that's heavy stuff, isn't it? You know, boy, the future of New Zealand rugby. Right, don't take <laughs> I've been guarding this with my life all evening. Well, look at the question. Show you. well, I'm going to give it to you. Just be patient, my little one. All right, so this is a super rugby question. New Zealand sides, are we all ears? Full attention. New Zealand sides have the top win rate of, or win ratio of 56% in Super Rugby history. So which nation has the second highest? Kiwi sides have the top win ratio of 56% in Super Rugby history. Which nation has the second highest? So they will ponder this. You can ponder that, and I'll give you the answer right after the break. Welcome back to Breakdown, live from our Auckland studios. And there has been some serious head scratching going on here, I can tell you. I've even had uh, some, some mouthing. Tell me about the trivia answer. Have you been Googling or do you know what the answer to our trivia question is? New Zealand sides have the top win ratio of 56% in Super Rugby history. So which nation has the second highest? They've been scratching their heads. What are the answers, team? Well, here's the interesting thing. D didn't Australia take how long to beat us in a mm. game? So I pretty much ruled them out of the equation. <laughs> Bills, we had a chat, but I'm not going to steal your answer because that would be wrong. JK's going to take a stab in the dark. Argentina. Got... Oh, oh, I knew he was going to try and... Here we yeah, go. Yeah, but you heard us, mate. You Lanks, heard us. Lanks, any, you know, what do you think? I'm going to go uh, the opposite of you, Jeff, and say Australia. Really? Yeah. The early days. You think in the early days when the... the they Brumbies won everything early. Rolling over. They did well when the yeah. Brumbies kept rolling over everybody. I'm going with the, uh, over in Argentina as well, the Hawaris. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. One team. Who's got bragging rights? There yes. we go. I'll tell you what, only 2% in it, though. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Yeah. No, no one went Japan, JK. No, there. Well, there it is, the winning ratios. We shouldn't forget. They had a great run, the Hawaris, didn't they? Uh, fantastic. 